First of all, I would like to say good afternoon to my dear colleagues. I will uh, present part of this uh, One Health initiative of this new portfolio of investment of CJR. And we are very happy to have Vietnam identify as one of the seven uh, priority countries. As Dieter said, uh, Vietnam is so famous when we talked about One Health at global level because you have One Health partnership, you have also Vu Hun and all this uh, institution looking at One Health. But let's agree on the concept because many people are not working on One Health in this platform. Uh, this is basically an approach. It's not a method, it's not a discipline. One Health is really an approach that recognizes the interconnections between the three health, human health, animal health, and the environment health. So basically we put the human health in the middle and we look at this in the, on the in, at the interface with the animals and with the environment. So basically this is a very systematic approach. We look at health of our ecosystem and human. And this initiative is very much in this spirit because the initiative want to generate evidence and develop tools that enable the redesign of food systems to improve human health based on, based on One Health principles. So we have many principles of One Health, but this is about system thinking, it's about integration, inter about interdisciplinary, it's about participation of different partners. And here we emphasize on the food systems and as Vietnamese and, and some colleagues here, we need, uh, uh, we might be aware also that you know, Vietnam is very much promoting the UN uh, Food System Summit. And uh, uh, the Vice Prime Minister Phan Bing Ming attended two days ago uh, the pre summit in Rome. And we are happy to have Tuyen in this group from CJR to attend that delegation from Vietnam. So, uh, why do we need this uh, initiative? Shortly, because of several points, but I will be very, very brief. We all know that COVID-19, the biggest pandemic of our time at the moment, Vietnam is suffering very badly for the last two or three weeks. I'm sorry to hear about that. But this is actually the zoonotic disease increase the frequency uh, because of people who encourage the wildlife habitats and livestock and fish production system identify very much uh, in different uh, places in Vietnam and worldwide. The second reason is in fact, this zoonotic disease uh, uh, Sixty percent of the zoonotic disease uh, caught uh, from human side actually is from uh, 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 originated from 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 zoonosis uh, pathogens, and we need to do something about that. We have also global issue of antimicrobial resistance, the so-called AMR, killing too many people at the moment. So the estimate is about seven hundred thousand dead a year, and the projection is the ten million dead per year by 2050 uh, if we don't do anything. Uh, compared to the current situation. The food safety issue is also a big issue in Vietnam. Uh, you know, the government pay a lot of attention uh, to that, but also the public. And to solve all this complex health issue, we need the integrated approach like One Health. And we do One Health here because, you know, CJR has been doing that for many years and we have good partnership with Vietnam and other country to do that. So the objective of this uh, initiative or the project, we can do that is really we want to protect the human health on the interface of human, animal, and the environment through the better and improvement of detection, prevention, and control of zoonotic diseases, foodborne diseases, and AMR in developing countries. And how do you do that? You can do that on, by doing three things in this project. First, we want to generate the evidence that enables the risk-based prioritization of different type of risks linked to food safety, linked to zoonosis, linked to AMR, but also to enable the surveillance and risk mitigation of different stakeholders and also the reinforcement of regulation in the countries along the value chain with the food system approach. We can do that through uh, evaluating the impacts of technology, tools and approaches, and we are developing these tools, or we will use the tools that exist, but we will improve this to identify and control zoonosis AMR and improve also the food safety and water quality. Uh, and finally, uh, as every country CGI work, we want to integrate some or more innovations into the programs that uh, uh, the government are implementing. I buy this way we can scan up the fighting and innovation. So the context we want to work in these uh, projects is really based on three things. One, we want to look at the risk 
of infectious disease and zoonotic disease on the interface with wildlife. And you know that Vietnam and some Southeast Asian country, of course, we, we, we want to control this wildlife issue and, and uh, wild animal farming, but it's been happening and we want to work on that area. The second area we identify is really is the intensification of food system. Vietnam export more than 40 billion US dollar a year of agri products. That is very intensified and we want to work on that system. And finally, we are not developed country yet. So the info market, informal market and informal food system are very relevant to, to address this at global level, but also at the country level. And we hope, we really hope that through this project of three years, working in many countries, integrating in the program of the country, we expect to reduce from four to 41 billion, a million case of diseases uh, uh, through this uh, effort of this project. I would like to show you, and you don't need to read that obviously because it's too small, but we want to rely our research program on the so-called theory of change. We expect things change. We want to identify with whom we work and to achieve at the end the impact areas, the five impact areas of CGI on health, environment, inclusion, equity, etc. So that you can have a little bit more details when we work on the work group and we can share the slide with you later. In terms of uh, uh, components of the project, we have we will have five work packages. So uh, three work packages will rely on the main pillar of one health areas, so namely zoonosis. The second is the food safety of foodborne diseases, and the third one is the antimicrobial resistance. So so basically, we want to work to reduce this zoonotic disease, uh, foodborne diseases, and the emission of, of, of AMR. But we will have also two cross-cutting uh, work package. The first one you can see on the top, work package four, is about environment, water, and wildlife interface. So our colleague from IMI would address this with CG and other partners to really improve the aspect of land use and water management to reduce all this health issue in these three pillars vertically. And the last one is about economics, governance, and behavior. You would learn more about that. And I have to say that working, uh, work, work uh, package four and five on environment and economics is often neglected or not received as enough attention in one health approach. And through this project, we want to do a little bit more, address it more appropriately. So now I would like to, to, to invite my colleagues to step in uh, to talk a little bit more about the contents and approach and innovations we want to have. And for the work package one, I would like to invite my colleague Bernard Bett, who is actually leading the One Health Center in Africa, but he also very familiar to Vietnam because he works on dengue fever and some other diseases in Vietnam. Bernard, over to you. Thanks a lot, Hung, and also the previous presenters. I think it was very good to arrange the two presentations to be done at the same time, because if you think of zoonotic diseases actually, it's just a manifestation of many other things which have happened in production, um, value chains and things. So the focus of this work package is to preempt diseases from spilling over to humans, from animals. And when, what we heard from Sapling is this, this uh, a plan by the government to enhance livestock production, mainly focusing on pigs and other um, livestock production, production systems. And when we do that, there usually some externalities which come out from that production uh, process. And so this work package focuses on two main objectives. So the first one is to preempt these diseases from spilling over. And we are thinking of pandemics, epidemics. These are diseases like COVID, MERS, or Nipah viruses, which when they occur, they occur with a much more, much more uh, incidence, speed, and affecting multiple populations, multiple countries. So the focus of this work package will be to use surveillance as well as identify high risk production systems and behaviors which are likely to, to, to precipitate uh, these occurrences and hence aim to maintain or limit the occurrence of these diseases at the animal level. So that's the main focus. The second objective, of course, is to think of the endemic diseases, diseases which have been with us for a long time. And we think of Vietnam, we usually work with our colleagues, Fred and other people working on cystisarcosis in pigs, there's leptospirosis, there's Japanese encephalitis. And the main purpose there would be to find ways of controlling them to limit 
the incidence of these diseases to the bare minimum, which will really severely reduce the human health burden. So those are the two main objectives. And, and, and uh, Peter, we can trans go to the next slide, just to give you a flavor of two main um, innovations that we aim to produce. And the first one is to map uh, the distribution patterns of these diseases. And mapping here is not just a physical map, but also mapping where interactions between wildlife livestock and humans are likely to occur. We know in Vietnam and other uh, Southeast countries, there is lots of captive farming which is coming into play. And so we want to identify those value chains and see where, are we, where is it likely to be that we'll see high risks occurring. So the second objective is to come up with new technologies, for example, diagnostic kits. And I know my colleagues like Fred, they have been aiming to train uh, slaughterhouse workers on how to identify um, um, these pathogens before the, the, the meat and um, other products are put in the market. So the main focus would be to come up with new tools which can be used to identify those pathogens before they get into your, uh, the, 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 the value chain uh, systems. And as I said, these are just examples. We have many more, but for today we can limit our discussions to those two. So over to you, Hung. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Bernard. So the second whole package is about food safety. And uh, maybe some of you uh, are aware of the food safety works that INRI and other CG centers have been working with partners in Vietnam. I would say that it's not a new research area, but we want to strengthen and continue the good job we have been doing so far, which is the purpose to continue reducing the burden of football diseases, uh, mainly with meat milk and egg because we are from uh, one health and animal source food but we start looking on so as a perishable food like fruit and, and vegetable with other centers you know and and uh, uh, we wouldn't do that through uh, these informal and traditional food systems this is very much uh, uh, going on so to what's the supermarket system as well and we want to develop the simple technologies and non punitive uh, governance approach implemented along the food value chain from production to consumption, the so-called farm to fork that we will continue really from the farm through slaughterhouse, market and consumption. Next slide, please. Uh, the innovations uh, uh, we want to develop, uh, I would say that uh, we would uh, continue the innovation we have been developing. For example, here two examples among others, to support of value chain actors to improve food safety through training, certification and promotion of the demands on consumption side, consumer side, and also of government in the development uh, of feasible non punitive approach to regulatory enforcement. So basically, in developing countries, we have a lot of laws and regulation, sometimes it's not working uh, in terms of reinforcement. So we need to balance a bit how to introduce this with the more incentive uh, 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 perspective uh, when you introduce intervention. And the second uh, innovation type of things. So we will uh, create the demand to change the behaviors of the, the, of the farmers, of the food safety uh, actors uh, by introducing a kind of, you know, for example, the nudge theory, how to push them to uh, change their behavior, but also to introduce a simple context specific, different type of physical a condition like color coarse services and containers of raw and cooked uh, food, for example, the intervention we did in Vietnam and Cambodia. Uh, so that also something that we want to strengthen in, in this work package. Uh, third work package is about antimicrobial resistance. And I see many colleagues also working uh, with the different project of INRI and also Danida funded project in Vietnam as well. So that is a, a quite yeah, interesting areas. Uh, to work because uh, this uh, emergence of antibiotics resistant both from human side and also animal side are very much linked to the overuse of antibiotics or more generally antimicrobials in livestock development. So, so we treat from animal side to prevent the, the human side. And, and for that, you know, we would use the integrated approach like you can see here, bringing the environmental perspective, human perspective, animal production and consumption to reduce the use of antimicrobials in animal system, but also to prevent the environmental pollution and the water system coming in uh, by improving the manual management and better understanding of the environment as a reservoir 
of AMR. So for example, here, our colleague Ashni uh, uh, Muntli, uh, who's from Denmark originally, but now she's working at INRI and, and to lead the CJ AMR hub. Uh, she will develop with colleagues and with you from Vietnam as well and different type of innovation here to example. Uh, the first one is really to, uh, to generate more evidence on how livestock and fish production and farm profit are affected by reducing uh, antimicrobial use while implementing alternatives, herd and fish health approaches. So you see, you see uh, we, we have a colleague from one fish also here, Mohan, who will work with Ashni on this side. And the second type of innovation is really to develop and use the ICT-based tool to enable uh, farmers and agro-vet dealers and as actors linked to, to AMR, for example, local veterinarians, for example, to address the livestock diseases, weak cells, uh, use of uh, antimicrobials. So that is too much optimistic, I think, but to reduce really significantly the quantity of antimicrobial uh, to use in this uh, environment. Uh, our colleague Javier from IMI is not here, but he would not leave this component of environment on water and wildlife interface. Here, because we are with Vietnamese colleagues, I put the figure of VAC is very famous uh, uh, of an model on garden integration of garden crop, uh, uh, fish pond and livestock. But this thing is still working, but uh, much more a uh, uh, small scale in Vietnam now. But the ideas from there is really when you identify uh, the crop, uh, the livestock and fish production that have implication on human health and environmental health. And here, uh, colleagues will uh, want to develop methods and approach to improve the land use and water management for the reduction of health risk linked to the agriculture, livestock aquaculture system. Uh, with the perspective uh, of zoonotic pathogen and antimicrobial residues, uh, and also the wildlife interface, uh, because this is also uh, uh, an important area, because many uh, uh, wildlife uh, life farming in Vietnam has been happening. This reduce now, but it's been continued, and that represents risk of consumption of this meat, but also uh, from wildlife uh, caught uh, from the nature. Innovation here, for example, is we will develop kind of different technologies to reduce the risk when we use the safe water, uh, we, we use wastewater in agriculture to reduce the risk on the end, uh, on, on the downstream of the user, for example, you know, reduce the load of bacteria, uh, uh, contamination to improve the water quality, or we can develop also business model for resource recovery and reuse of animal waste. So this is uh, this kind of things of innovation. I would like to invite Peter to turn on the camera and mic and say a few words maybe on the wildlife perspective shortly so that uh, will serve as a good input for the discussion later uh, for this project. Yeah, th thanks, Hung, and uh, pleasure to see you all on the, on the call, Vivian, everybody else. Uh, Chadia, good to see you. Um, yes, it, it's quite interesting when you think about the involvement of wildlife um, as a risk for um, infectious diseases. We all think about pandemics and emerging diseases, but th those are quite rare events. And there are some other um, diseases that we know wildlife that are eaten can, uh, can uh, run a risk of. So I think one of the goals that we're trying to look at is how can we assess the risk of different systems that have a connection through to wildlife? Uh, we think about places like Vietnam where there is significant farming of wildlife and it's mixed with, with domestic animals as well. So there's a potential for pathogens to move across from one species to another. How does that affect risk in, in those countries? We think about um, communities that depend on wildlife for food and, um, and whether some of those species that are eaten have a risk of, of uh, zoonotic diseases, both known and new ones. So one of the uh, strategies is to look at that risk and try and find clever ways to assess how risky a certain activity is and then whether you can look at people's um, uh, uh, an understanding of, of the incentives for eating those species or for farming them and, and look at ways to do that that reduces the risk. So that's the strategy and that's the approach. We're also going to do a li little bit of work hopefully on, tr on trying to test some species to see what pathogens they carry um, as a potential risk. So we're at the very early stages of working out how to do that. Um, but I think that this is a great opportunity to, to give a realistic approach, recognizing that a lot of communities depend on wildlife, uh, that it has great value, 
and that farming systems, if, if done in the right way, um, can actually reduce the risk of zoonoses. So, so um, rather than to go down the fear mongering approach, but to actually work with uh, communities and um, local uh, uh, policymakers to understand um, what systems are being put in place and how they can be done in a way that reduces the risk. Thanks very much, Hong. So, so as I said from the beginning, that is the last but not 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 least, uh, what package is very important because uh, you know we have not done enough in one health. The ideas of this economic governance and behavior work package is really to, to, to develop and test different type of, you know, the, to evaluate the effect of capacity building incentive and to monitor also on behavior uh, of value chain actors along uh, the value chain, but also government uh, people uh, to provide the support or oversight for relevant sector through randomized evaluation. You see randomized evaluation is kind of high level an efficient and trustful evaluation of what we can introduce in, in One Health. And we will work more or to assess the cost benefit analysis, the different model economic impact of the pandemics and control measure. And so that we can come up with policy uh, uh, guidance to the government and different level of authorities. For example, here, uh, the two innovation are proposed by, by this work package is really, is really to look at the performance management and the accountability of system for public uh, of servants responsible for implementing surveillance and reinforcement of AMR and, and food safety regulation. So we can, you know, IPRI have a lot of experience to, to help governments in, in doing this kind of thing, and we want to do that. And for example, another type of innovation is really to uh, develop system to facilitate compliance of small scale producers trader or vendors of livestock and our aquaculture products with food safety, AMR, and animal waste management as, as standards. So it's come back to the issue of food safety I explained before. It's really the question of incentive, how to incentivize people to comply, to change their behavior, to improve the areas uh, of, of, of the thing we work. Why, why do we select Vietnam and, and seek other countries? So we apply a a prioritization process to do that. And you know that in our three years, not very long period for a research project, we want to be efficient. Uh, we identify that because, you know, uh, this country have a very strong interest from government side in One Health and the partnership with existing CJR relationship. Among 15 centers, we have 10 centers operating in Vietnam at the moment. So it's very good critical mass in Vietnam. And also we look at the intensification system of animal uh, production and wildlife involvement in food systems. So, uh, so that's why you have Vietnam, you have India, Bangladesh in Asia, you have Tanzania, uh, you have uh, uh, Ethiopia, uh, Uganda and Kenya in East Africa and Cote d'Ivoire in West Africa for specific context. And the research question, innovation and teams are selected uh, really based on the potential for long-term impact and for, on human infection disease burden reduction. And for that, you know, I think that this meeting would be very important to mobilize the input from Vietnamese colleagues to improve this uh, proposal. The last slide, I just want to say that we are working uh, this, uh, uh, on this proposal development with uh, CGIA centers, you know, that you now we are INRI, IPRI, IMI, and Wonfish, but we bring also external partners from Liverpool University EcoHealth Alliance that uh, more on the wildlife side and the public health side, but also the Santa Suisse, the Swiss Center for Scientific Research in Cote d'Ivoire for coordination on the aspect of, of West Africa. And of course, you know, the Vietnamese partner and other national partner are not there yet, but that will be part of the discussion, how to mobilize and engage with you in this project. With that, I think that, you know, uh, uh, we uh, uh, end our presentation on One Health Initiative. Thanks, Peter and colleagues.